I'd like to thank Richard Bloom, Irvin Laszlo, and the Laszlo Institute for giving me the opportunity to participate in today's symposium. Today I'm going to be speaking about cosmology's importance and impact beyond the natural and physical sciences, as well as the meaning and making of a paradigm shift. I'm not a cosmologist. I have an interdisciplinary background in the social sciences that combines political science, communication studies, and a doctorate in critical discourse analysis. So why would I, a political scientist and discourse analyst, be interested in cosmology? Well, for starters, cosmology can be described as a type of master discourse and meta paradigm that contains all other paradigms within it. Fundamentally, cosmology tells the story of what is. What is this thing we call the universe? What is the structure of the universe? What is its driving force? How and why did it develop the way it has? Is it isolated or connected? Is it finite or infinite? Does it have an origin? Does it have an end? I think we can agree that these questions are as much philosophical as they are scientific. And just thinking about the universe will eventually lead to contemplating everything else within it, including our understanding of our man-made world and culture. In this respect, if and when cosmology changes, then conceptually, everything else can also change. And this has happened in various times in history, which leads me to the first part of today's talk. Cosmology, and more importantly, changes in cosmology, have precipitated tectonic cultural and ideological shifts that have shaped and defined the course of Western history. For instance, let's look at one of the most important cosmological shifts in human history, the shift from an Earth-centric cosmology to a Sun-centric cosmology via Galileo and the Copernican Revolution. This shift was so profound that it eventually sparked the scientific revolution the Enlightenment, the Industrial Revolution, materialism, urbanization, and our mechanistic view of the universe and nature, among many other things. It also helped to unseat the power of the Catholic Church, which was already facing resistance from the Reformation. This new cosmology, which essentially opposed the Church's official view of the heavens, eventually helped to move the West away from theological rule and towards modern day forms of government and later on democracy. In addition, one of the greatest impacts of the shift to this new cosmology was how it impacted our understanding of what it means to be human. It has been noted that Galileo's ideas not only sparked a scientific revolution, they initiated a large scale revolution in human thinking. He changed the way we see the world and more importantly, how we perceive ourselves within it. Galileo's defiance of the church led to what has been described as the most important idea in modern history. The idea that any person, regardless of his or her individual characteristics, can seek and find the truth. So implied in the scientific revolution is the recognition that individuals matter and can think for themselves. Now, while we may take this for granted today, this thinking was revolutionary and blasphemous in Galileo's time and indeed landed him in deep, deep trouble with the church. However, while cosmology impacts culture, we have to remember that cosmological shifts are also a product of their time and tend to grow out of and or reinforce pre-existing philosophical and socio-political settings or interests that can benefit from or exploit ideas promoted and reflected in a new cosmology. For instance, while he was condemned by the church, Galileo was also backed by certain segments of the aristocracy, as well as the powerful banking family, the Medicis. These entities were great supporters of Renaissance humanism, a philosophy that we know prioritizes and glorifies the potential of the individual and the human mind. Galileo's ideas were reinforced by, and also served to reinforce, Renaissance humanism and art. Artists of Galileo's day responded favorably and enthusiastically to the new ideas that science was making. These discoveries and the scientific revolution ultimately affirmed and furthered Renaissance artists' obsession 
with representing man and nature accurately and realistically. So basically realism, realism in the arts. Beyond art and philosophy, the scientific revolution helped to bring the fruits of humanism into the realm of politics. Here, it served to help shift ultimate power from the church to the monarchy. But the monarchy's supremacy was short-lived, as notions of human importance and self-actualization led learned individuals and certain merchant classes to question the absolute dominance of monarchs, in a manner that eventually gave rise to republics and nation-states, including modern-day forms of democracy. So overall, the cultural impacts of the heliocentric view of the cosmos were massive and far-reaching. Occurring over several centuries, these changes in science, technology, governance, and philosophy form the foundations of modern-day Western civilization. The next major paradigm shift in cosmology was that of relativity and the Big Bang. Similar to Galileo, it has been noted that Einstein's impact was so immense that any assessment must range beyond the sciences to take in the various ways he changed culture. Now, this is not a direct result of Einstein or his cosmology. Rather, it is a result of Einstein's theory of relativity being adopted and applied in the non-sciences, especially in the areas of art and philosophy. For instance, in the world of art, Einstein's theory of relativity contributed to the revolutionary departure from representational art and the rise and dominance of abstract art. This is essentially a paradigm shift in the world of art. Most notably, Einstein's theory of relativity contributed to the development of cubism, a style established by Picasso and his colleagues. In cubist artwork, objects are analyzed, broken up, and reassembled in an abstracted manner instead of being depicted from one viewpoint. Now, in the world of abstract art, art doesn't have to make sense and is celebrated as such. And this is a stark contrast from the dominance of realistic art in previous eras. While many celebrated Cubist art, some art critics, to this day, condemn it as the death of art, describing it as intentionally meaningless. Now, whatever one's opinion or taste in art, this paradigm shift owes much to the cultural influence of Einstein and the paradigm shift in cosmology. Relativity also had a profound impact on philosophy and human thinking, especially in the form of relativism. Now, relativism as an idea goes back to the ancient world. While it was refuted by philosophers such as Plato, arguments for relativism have existed throughout history. However, it was not until powerful interests had a use for or could benefit from relativism that the concept became widespread. As noted in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, quote, the popularity of the very idea of relativism in the 20th century owes something to Einstein's special theory of relativity, which was to be used both as model and as well as a vindication for various relativistic claims." End quote. Two examples, I believe, are epistemological relativism and moral relativism. Epistemological or cognitive relativism espouses the idea that there is no absolute truth to be had since all truth is relative. Similarly, Moral relativism holds that morality, meaning right and wrong, good and bad, is also relative and varies from person to person. Prior to relativity, philosophers such as Aristotle, Kant, and Mill argued that there was an absolute truth and an absolute way of approaching various aspects of life, especially with respect to morality and moral obligations. So the truth and morality went from being something that was absolute and out there for all people to arrive at to something variable with potentially billions of individual truth and ethics. It should be noted that this philosophical position is not typically accepted by the laws and social norms we produce. To this day, the law still relies on the founding premise that humans are capable of reason and knowing right from wrong and does not operate within the confines of moral relativism. Law notwithstanding, however, postmodern philosophy which emphasizes pluralism and relativism and rejects any certain belief in absolute value, brought moral relativism into the sociopolitical milieu. Now, it has been noted that Einstein was not a moral relativist and even recoiled at the misappropriation and misapplication of his theory in the non-sciences. For instance, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy states, quote, Einstein did not think that the theory of relativity supported relativism in ethics or epistemology. Because although in his model, simultaneity and sameness of place are relative to reference frames, 
the physical laws expressing such relativity are constant and universal, and hence in no sense relative. End quote. If that's the case, then Einstein's theory of relativity, and by extension contemporary cosmology, may have been misapplied to serve certain interests. For example, in a 2020 article entitled Think Like Einstein, The Paradox Mindset, the author notes that Einstein was used to conceiving and embracing opposite or contradictory ideas, and also that many Nobel Prize winning scientists are known to do the same. Describing this as a paradox mindset, the author encourages readers to do likewise, arguing that, quote, embracing contradictory ideas is one of the main assets for raising creativity and is a better way forward. The author concludes that paradox is a good thing that ought to be embraced in the workplace. Similarly, in a 2020 BBC article on work culture, the authors argue that once again, the paradox mindset is the key to success in the workplace, stating that, quote, although paradoxes often trip us up, embracing contradictory ideas may actually be the secret to creativity and leadership, end quote. And strangely, in a talk at the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, scholars argued that the key to promoting peacemaking and peaceful intervention overseas is paradoxical thinking, which they define as information that is inconsistent with held beliefs and raises the sense of absurdity. Now, I think these examples clearly show that Einstein and his theory of relativity are being used to promote and normalize paradox and contradiction in contemporary culture and everything from workplace conduct to politics and foreign policy. So given everything we've discussed so far, we can clearly see the profound and far-reaching impacts of cosmology on culture and human thinking. This leads us to the second part of our talk, the paradigm shift process and the present state of cosmology. While contemporary cosmology and its theories are being used to promote paradox and contradiction in the broader culture, according to physicist and philosopher of science Thomas Kuhn, mounting paradox or contradiction in science is actually indications of crisis and impending revolution. The concept of paradigm shift was first formalized by Kuhn in his groundbreaking book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. In that book, Kuhn challenged the common conception of science as a steady progression of the accumulation of new ideas. Looking at the history of scientific advancement, Kuhn argued instead that science advanced the most by occasional revolutionary explosions of new knowledge, each revolution triggered by the introduction of new ways of thought so large and so different they must be called new paradigms. But how exactly does this happen? For Kuhn, a paradigm shift is a process and it has distinct stages. These stages are pre-science, a pre-stage where the field or discipline has no workable paradigm to successfully guide its work. Then there is normal science. This is the normal step, where the field has a scientifically based model of understanding that works. Then we have model drift. Here the model of understanding, or the normal science, starts to drift, due to the accumulation of anomalies and contradictions that the model cannot explain. Then comes model crisis. At this stage, the model drift, meaning the anomalies and contradictions, becomes so excessive that the model is broken and can no longer guide the field. It is a crisis because decisions can no longer be made rationally. At this stage, attempts to patch the model up and make it work fail, and the field is essentially in anguish. After model crisis comes model revolution. This begins when serious candidates for a new model emerge. It's a revolution because the new model is so radically different from the old. Finally, we arrive at paradigm change. A single new paradigm emerges, and the field changes from the old to the new paradigm. When this step ends, the new paradigm becomes the new normal science, and the Kuhn cycle is complete. So, where does cosmology find itself today? Currently, the biggest topic in debate in cosmology seems to be cosmology itself. Everywhere you look, someone is talking about a crisis in cosmology. As physicist Eric Lerner has shown, in 1995, there was one media reference every year to the crisis in cosmology. By the beginning of the 2000s, it had gone up to five references per year, and then 12 references by the mid-2000s. By the latter part of the present decade, it was approximately two dozen references per year. 
And then in 2019, it shot up to 130 references per year. This is a drastic increase in just two years, and the trend is continuing. Popular mainstream science and non-science magazines and websites are full of headlines suggesting that cosmology is presently in deep trouble. Some examples include Cosmology is in crisis over how to measure the universe, Wired Magazine, The Crisis in Cosmology, PBS Spacetime, The New Crisis in Cosmology, PBS Spacetime again, Could the Big Bang be wrong? Discover Magazine, Is it time to dethrone the Big Bang Theory? Forbes, and Is the Big Bang in Crisis? Astronomy.com. Now I could go on and on, there are hundreds more, but I think you get the picture. The takeaway is that there is a growing general awareness, both in the field and in the popular media, of a problem and crisis in standard cosmology. Given the present discourse and scientists' own words, I believe we are currently in the model crisis stage of the Kuhn paradigm shift cycle. The titles I listed deal with one or more of the following as it relates to the Big Bang or standard cosmology. Anomaly, meaning something that deviates from what is standard, normal, or accepted and or contradiction, meaning new measurements, observations, or findings that undermine, contradict, or oppose the major principles and assumptions of standard cosmology in some way. Now, let us remember that in Thomas Kuhn's cycle, when there are a few anomalies and contradictions, then the dominant model or normal science is said to be in a state of drift. But when too many anomalies and contradictions accumulate, which the model cannot adequately explain or fix, then the model is said to be in a state of crisis. And for Kuhn, crisis means that the model is broken and can no longer guide the field. Curiously, however, despite their alarmist titles, um, most of the articles and videos listed fail to address whether or not the current model is broken, with many even doubling down on it, or, interestingly, blaming the failure of Big Bang cosmology on the so-called increasingly weird and wacky strange universe. So one would think that having to blame the universe for the failure of one's theory would be a red flag to re-examine at least some of the underlying assumptions of that theory, but that has not been the case. This is not surprising, however, given what Kuhn suggests about dominant or normal science. Kuhn argued that normal science is institutionalized, and therefore functions much like other dominant institutions, such as religion or politics, in that it is essentially dogmatic, hegemonic, and resistant to change. So under this understanding of science, resisting innovation, doubling down on a broken model, or blaming the model's failures on the weirdness of the universe are all further symptoms of a model in crisis. Which brings us to the final part of today's talk. In the Kuhn paradigm shift cycle, Model crisis gives way to model revolution. So while standard cosmology is in crisis, it is also inevitably heading towards revolution. For Kuhn, model revolution begins when serious candidates for a new model emerge that are fundamentally different from the existing model. As he explains, the new and existing models speak entirely different languages, making them irreconcilable and incompatible. This is what makes it a revolution in the first place. To give an analogous example of this, let's consider the paradigm shift in art that we discussed earlier. In comparing abstract or cubist art to realist art, we can clearly see that they speak completely different languages and are totally irreconcilable and incompatible. For instance, it's difficult to conceive of the Mona Lisa and Picasso's Weeping Woman sharing the same canvas. Returning to Kuhn and his model, overall, the main criteria for model revolution is the emergence of a new model that is fundamentally different. And with respect to paradigm change, which is Kuhn's final stage, the new paradigm must also be simpler and completely supplant the previous model. I believe this goes against the reality of the ever-increasing complexity in contemporary cosmology. Now, I'll leave it to the physical and natural scientists to debate this point, but even a cursory look at standard cosmology over the last 20 or 30 years shows that it is becoming progressively more complex and more contradictory. Moreover, in contrast to Kuhn's requirement for fundamental difference, adherents of the standard model admit that present-day alternatives are actually more like add-ons and extensions to the standard model since they, quote, 
typically modify some of the main features, but do not reject the Big Bang. End quote. But superficial alternatives that retain the language or tenets of the Big Bang are not different enough to be part of an emerging cosmological revolution. Overall, Kuhn's criteria for model revolution and paradigm change ultimately fly in the face of claims made by Big Bang scientists, such as, quote, we can be quite confident that wherever future theories and discoveries take us, the Big Bang will be part of the picture, end quote. On the contrary, according to the very definition of paradigm shift and what it means to have a revolution in science, the new cosmology categorically cannot and therefore will not be a Big Bang 2.0. Simply put, the standard model and any add-ons or extensions to it can play no part in the future paradigm in cosmology. In closing, it appears that cosmology is in the midst of a revolutionary crisis. The standard model is broken and dying and appears to be on its way out. By Big Bang scientists' own admission, the model is plagued with mounting inconsistencies and is an undeniable crisis. Thomas Kuhn has shown us that we cannot look to broken paradigms to guide us. This means that a truly alternative cosmology is the only way forward. Given that reality, it is indeed a very interesting time to be alive. Historically, science and philosophy have been engaged in a dance with the mysteries of the cosmos, sometimes moving us forward, other times moving us farther away. A new cosmology, emerging in a new time, allows us to once again ask the quintessential questions of the universe and philosophy. What is this thing we call the universe? What is its structure? What is its driving force? And so on and so on. The answers to these and other questions, conceived through a fundamentally different cosmology, speaking a fundamentally different language, will hopefully help bring us closer to better understanding the universe and our place within it. According to Kuhn, this presents us with an opportunity to conceive an entirely new world. To quote Kuhn at length, though the world does not change with a change of paradigm, the scientist afterward works in a different world. Rather than being an interpreter, the scientist who embraces a new paradigm is like the man wearing inverting lenses, confronting the same constellation of objects as before, and knowing that he does so, he nevertheless finds them transformed through and through. Now, given cosmology's profound cultural impacts and all the ways in which cosmological paradigm shifts have shaped and defined the course of history, this is also true beyond science. For instance, the shift to relativity in Big Bang contributed to a major paradigm shift in the world of art. Now, while the world did not change with the shift to cubism and modern art, the artist afterward was working and creating in an entirely different world. What's more, the world of the art viewer audience also fundamentally changed. Before abstraction, representational art had an intended subject and or meaning and a primary interpretation that most people could or would agree on. But with abstract and cubist art, the art experience becomes subjective and open to multiple interpretations. The change to a new art forever changed the experience of the art audience, and henceforth, modern art was to be experienced in a relativist fashion. This drastically altered the experience of viewing and interacting with art, and essentially changed the world of art for both the artist and the audience. The same is true of the paradigm shift in power, which was aided by the shift from a geocentric to a heliocentric view of the cosmos. Before that cosmological shift, the Catholic Church was still the dominant political power in Europe, but Galileo's heresy was the fatal blow to its dominance, and the world of theocracy was forever altered and eventually ceased to exist in the West. Moreover, as stated in the first part of our discussion, one of the biggest impacts of past cosmological paradigm shifts was the way they changed how we perceive the world and our place within it. Galileo and the scientific revolution led to the idea that individuals matter and can seek and find the truth, with a capital T. While the application of relativity to philosophy led to relativism and the idea that there is no absolute truth, since all truth is relative. 
Now these worldviews are so different and so incompatible that it can be said that any two individuals who live in the same era but do not agree on the nature of truth, meaning if it is relative or absolute, will essentially be living in two different worlds. Overall, given that our subject is cosmology, the all-encompassing meta-paradigm, and given the profound cultural and ideological impacts and changes that eventually result from changes in cosmology, we can be quite certain that when the cosmological paradigm changes again, it will transform not only the scientific world, but once again, the worlds of art, philosophy, technology, spirituality, etc. And the time is approaching. We are on the cusp of a revolution in cosmology. The new paradigm will impact all of humanity, ultimately transforming our understanding of our world and what it means to be human. Thank you.